Hello and welcome to my channel. Today is April the 1st, which makes it April Fool's Day. So this should be a video about something super funny, but it's actually not. It's about IBS, which trust me, is no laughing matter. I'm going to put a link into a video that I first did about IBS, and it was more of a personal journey about how I'd suffered from IBS most of my adult life from sort of 18 until I finally got it under control and what I used to get it under control. And because I've been a health and beauty journalist for 25 years, I'd interviewed all the experts and I knew that I didn't want to treat the symptoms, I wanted to try and treat the cause. And you know, I'm massively pro probiotics. And so I talked about the probiotics that for me changed my life really, and certainly changed the fact that for most of my adult life, I had all of the classic symptoms of IBS and how I got rid of them. But this video is, is the beginning of IBS Awareness Month. So the whole of April this year, it's IBS Awareness Month. And I'm in a position now where I very rarely suffer from it because I take probiotics. And I wanted to talk to you about a survey that's been done by a company who make my favorite probiotic, which is Alphlorex. And I've talked about it before, it's a unique and literally unique, nobody else makes it. It's a unique uh, healthy bacteria that was found in the colons of healthy people who never suffered from IBS. And it's a unique um, probiotic that mothers pass on to newborn babies. So all healthy mothers and all healthy babies have it. And then what happens is as you get older, for me, I had a childhood of constant, really strong antibiotics because I had constant chest infections. Then when I reached 21, I had um, impacted wisdom teeth, which caused tonsillitis. And again, I took loads of antibiotics and essentially I messed my gut up. And at that point onwards from sort of 18 or 19 onwards until I got it under control by taking probiotics, I had really bad IBS. So the company have done a survey and I thought you might be interested in the figures because it's kind of nice to know if you're watching this, I presume you suffer from IBS, that we're not alone. The stats are mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And I've got them written down here because I want to get the stats accurate and correct. But basically this is a safe space now. We're not alone. <laughs> okay, so this is really interesting. Um, Alphlorex basically interviewed over 2000 UK adults earlier this year, the early part of this year. And it's really shocking. I find these figures really shocking. Six out of 10 people, that's 60% of the people asked, regularly had some sort of bowel issues. Whether you identify it as IBS or not, it depends on your dialogue and how comfortable you feel about talking it. I feel like all my girlfriends, all we ever talk about is, I was going to say men, <laughs> men and our intestines, but it's kind of true. And then the research showed why, because I'm going to tell you the people that suffer from most forms of IBS, and it's kind of my girlfriends and all my friends. So six out of 10 Brits, the people questioned suffered from IBS, which I think is really shocking. Um, the symptoms were most commonly bloating. That was one of my main ones. Flatulence, I kind of didn't have so much. Constipation, stomach pain and cramps after eating. Oh the memory of the agonies of stomach pain and cramps and also diarrhea. And when you look at the age of the people who suffer, I'm not really surprised by this either. So the most common age to suffer from IBS is 25 to 35. And if I think of that, I think that's when I suffer the most. I was working incredibly hard. I was incredibly stressed. I was sort of struggling my way up the magazine, newspaper, journalism, TV ladder. I was eating on the run, I was having fun, I was burning the candle at both ends. We all do it. I wasn't really thinking about my health. And as a result, I used to suffer a lot. But the second most common group is 35 to 44. And that's when I began to think about my symptoms and take them seriously and think, what can I do about it? People in London are far more likely to suffer than anyone else. Why? That's a really good question. I have no idea. I just know that nearly all of my friends suffer. When I did my first video, you were so lovely. You all said, you're so brave to talk about this. And I was thinking, doesn't everybody suffer from this? Because all of my friends seem to, they all live in London. They're all super busy. They're all super high achieving, really busy, stressed, either young mums or professionals or young mums and professionals. Anyway, pretty much, I would say 60% of my friends suffer from some form of IBS. Now, what's very interesting is none of them are going to the doctors. And if I think about me, that's me too. 
You just learn to live with IBS, don't you? It's really, really annoying and upsetting. And if I think back to my 20s and early 30s, actually it can be quite crippling. Um, so why don't we go to the doctor about it? Because we don't, do we? Are we embarrassed? I'm not even sure I was embarrassed. I think I just knew as a health journalist they couldn't really do anything for me. I didn't want to take strong drugs. I just wanted to somehow manage it myself. This is really interesting. So Brit's putting off going to the doctors, back to the study. So when they've asked if they've seen a doctor, most people don't go to the doctor, but it's either after getting such bad crippling symptoms, you, you literally can't live with them, or it's after a while and thinking, I'm desperate, what am I gonna do? But most people tend to try over-the-counter medications and the over-the-counter medications they try are probably anti-cramping medications, which work, they're, they're brilliant. They can really work, but they won't get rid of the other symptoms. And also they're treating the symptoms, they're not really treating the cause. And I wanted to get to the cause of mine. And that's when I started looking at my gut microbiome. And IBS is directly related to having a poor gut microbiome. And that is the balance of healthy to unhealthy bacteria that lives in your intestines. And that's when I started probio taking probiotics. That's when I got serious about my symptoms. And that's when, surprise, surprise, my symptoms started to go. Uh, let's look at the triggers for IBS. Honestly, these symptoms, it's like they can see into my soul or to my intestines because they're speaking to me directly. The things that cause your IBS symptoms. 29% said it was their diet. Eating too quickly. I don't really eat quickly, so that didn't affect me. Caffeine, that's a really interesting one. 16% of people said caffeine triggered their symptoms. I know for sure that I can't drink coffee, um, but I think that's a combination of caffeine and dairy for me personally. Not eating regularly enough. It's like these people are, are watching me <laughs> and my life and the way I live. Alcohol, as I said, it's definitely a trigger for me. And hormones. I'm lucky enough not to have to worry about that anymore. But when I was in my 20s and 30s and early 40s, you could almost time my IBS according to how my periods worked. The influx of estrogen, and for me, prostaglandins, which are the chemicals that are released in your body to make your womb cramp, sorry men if you're listening to this, had a direct effect on my IBS. They just did. I could almost plot it exactly when I was going to be most susceptible to suffering from IBS. So the question is, if these are the problems, what can you do about it? So again, Aflorex asked people, what have you tried to treat your IBS with? Because I think most people want to treat it at home. And 84% of people asked said they had tried a probiotic. And people believe that the advantage of a probiotic, which is true, is it treats the cause of the problem. It doesn't treat the symptoms. So it's not like using an anti-cramping medication or a peppermint oil, both of which can work but both of which are treating symptoms. You want to get to the cause of it. And for me, the cause is a dysmorphic gut microbiome. Di and IBS diagnosis also was another thing which I thought was really interesting. And I hope you find these stats interesting because if you're a sufferer, to me, they're incredible. By the way, this study, I'm getting the sneaky peek. It gets released tomorrow. And next week, you're going to hear lots more about it. So 21% of Brits had been diagnosed with IBS or gut problems by their doctor or a nutritionist, a healthcare professional. And 15% of people further had suspected but had just never been properly diagnosed. That's a lot of people walking around with really unhappy intestines and bowels, right? It's, it's fascinating. Um, there is also a massive lack of understanding about what IBS is. I did an event recently where I was talking to a lot of members of the public about IBS and women are much more likely to identify with the term IBS. And I think it's because it's quite a common term to read in women's magazines or to listen to on women's TV programs. And men weren't. They were like, well, I don't suffer from IBS. I just always suffer from bloating or flatulence. Men are much more likely to own that as being essentially funny and masculine than women. And I think women are much more open to speaking to each other and having a dialogue about their intestines, especially if you've ever been on a girly holiday. You'll know exactly what I mean if you've shared a bathroom with somebody and you're traveling and you suddenly get an attack. It can be awful. So I'm going to put all these stats up and I'm going to put a link through to the study below because I think it's really interesting. And I did a study, did a, a panel event recently and somebody said to me, what supplements do you take? And I said, you know, the problem with me is compliance. Like, should I be taking fish oils? Yes. Should I be taking vitamin D? Yes. Should I occasionally take iron? Probably yes. Do I remember? No. 
And somebody said to me, well, how do you know if a supplement works? And they were also talking about probiotics. And I said, the simple thing is stop taking it and see how you feel. And that for me is the acid test on a probiotic. If you take it and your symptoms go, brilliant. If you stop taking it and your symptoms come back, then you'll know that it's that supplement that was working for you. And I've said it before, Alpharex works for me. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna put all of the stats below because personally I find it fascinating. I hope this isn't too long a video. Let me know what you think and let's have an honest, open discussion about IBS because really it's such a common problem and there's no shame in it and there is a way to manage your symptoms. I'm not sure if you ever cure IBS. I think you'll always be prone to it, but there are ways of managing your symptoms, I promise. Thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll put all of the details below, all of the stats below, and be aware that April is IBS Awareness Month. This is not an April Fool's joke. I take IBS very seriously. It's no laughing matter. See you next week.